I've been working on experimental support for controlling open type font features through CSS in Mozilla's Gecko rendering engine. Here are some examples to show this in action. Here's a line of text displayed in Garamond Premiere Pro, an open type font from Adobe. First, let's look at small capitals. Currently, we implement the small caps property by converting lowercase letters to uppercase and reducing the font size. This doesn't look all that good, though. The small caps are not small enough in comparison to the full-size ones, and they're too light. If we scaled them down further to get a better height, the weight difference would be even worse. However, this font actually contains properly designed small cap glyphs. So instead of uppercasing and shrinking the font, we can use an open type feature to access these. Now the glyphs are sized appropriately and their weight remains consistent with the full-size capitals. Comparing them again, fake small caps synthesized by the browser, and real small caps from the open type font. Now let's take a look at ligatures. This font includes some ligatures that Firefox applies by default, such as the TH and FT combinations here. If we really didn't want these, we could turn off the common ligatures feature, but let's leave them enabled. For a different look, we could also turn on the discretionary ligatures feature. This adds extra ligature combinations that are not enabled by default, but are present as an option in the font. If we choose the italic face of Garamond Premiere Pro, there's more to explore. As well as discretionary ligatures like those we saw in the regular face, the italic has an alternate set of capital letters that we can access with the swash feature. Features like this can dramatically change the overall feel of the text. Now let's look at a different font. Megalopolis Extra includes discretionary ligatures similar to those we saw in Garamond. I've also turned on stylistic set features to access an alternate form of the lowercase y and a lowercase e that links with the following letter. This bold display font really comes alive though when we use it with uppercase text. Here the discretionary ligatures feature is automatically producing the quirky combinations that add a lot of interest and character to the line of text. There are other stylistic options we could alter as well, like an alternate form of the E and a stylized capital S. This flamboyant poster is not a graphic. It's created entirely with HTML text and CSS styles using the Megalopolis font and applying a variety of the font's open type features to different parts of the text. As another example of the use of font features, let's look at the word for university, written in kanji characters using a Japanese font. The second glyph here is the Chinese character shui, or school, and is displayed in its modern simplified form. However, some institutions may want their name to be written using the traditional form of the character. To achieve this without having to modify the actual text, we can select a traditional forms feature in the font. Here's the simplified form again, and the traditional one. Now here are some tables from an old recipe book. The fractional values here have simply been typed as digits separated by a slash, but they're not very easy to read at a glance. However, we can turn on the fractions feature in the font to make these sequences automatically display as real fractions. See how much better this looks? And finally, let's look at a table full of numbers. The font used here, Kaluna, provides proportional old-style numerals by default, which look good within running text. However, when we're presenting tables of data, it may be better to use lining numerals and to make things line up more neatly, we can also switch from proportional to tabular or fixed space digits. 
we can mix and match these features, the numeral style and their spacing, to fine-tune the font for any particular context. These are just some examples of how OpenType feature control will allow web designers to improve and customize the appearance of their pages. We plan to implement this in a future version of Firefox and hope to standardize CSS properties that other browsers can also support.